Have you ever looked at a picture, a scene from a movie or a video game where something big and bombastic was happening and you noticed a very small thing in the background, an item or a character that you never saw before because they were there overshadowed by the mountainous stakes that are displayed? What if I tell you that these little things count far more than you can imagine? A long time ago I had a friend, a very close friend, with whom I faced some challenges and we went through some things together. Later on she moved abroad, a couple thousand miles away from me, a couple miles away from the place that she was living, and we decided to write letters to each other. And I don't mean like emails or things like that, I mean like physical letters. Since when we were talking online we were usually not doing some small talk, we would usually just write very huge messages because we usually had very little time to just, you know, do the small talk, we would really wake up just write a big chunk of message and then in the evening we would just write another chunk of a big message. So we were basically writing online letters but then we switched to physical letters. And then one time I felt that there was something in the envelope, in the envelope of the letter that she sent me. It was this small piece of stone. This is malachite, a piece, small piece of malachite. And according to the letter that I received, this piece of malachite was supposed to protect me from evil spirits and bring balance to my lab because I was going through some you know negative things in my life at the time so she wanted to you know to cheer me up with this small gift and it was very cute you know sadly we parted ways but I still keep this small piece of malachi and this was a very nice gift from her does this stone actually protect me from evil does this stone actually give balance to my life well it doesn't really matter she believed it does. So why did they tell you this little story? Well, to show you how those very small details can have a lot of impact and meaning to some people. Did you know that Malachite was supposed to bring harmony and protect you from evil? Maybe you knew, maybe you didn't, but I guess that vast majority of the world doesn't know this small useless trivia. However, in this very small context, it was important. It was important for me. It was a very kind gesture and it was a gesture that was well-meaning. That is why those small cultural beliefs can have a lot of impact in your stories and in more larger terms, in your world building. When you're doing your world building, sometimes it is very beneficial to just, you know, zoom in and try to see what the common people are doing, all those very small details, and build up their unique culture. It's actually much more important that you might first realize, because inventing just one small thing into your world, one small trivia, like a cultural trivia or something like that, might not really impact anything and might not be really important. But if you start imagining in your mind how a culture works and what the every single detail of that culture is interwoven to the story and might be connected to something like a historical event, a, maybe a religion or a geographical landmark, then it will start to add up and it will build depth, which is very important for immersion. This can be utilized very effectively also when writing a stories. You can invent some very important but very small and subtle trivia about some maybe group of people or a character by a smart placement of some, at first glance at least, very insignificant things. And later on, you can follow with a reveal that will change everyone's perspective about maybe some character. And those people who were very attentive and they were actually perceptive enough to see those small details will be like, aha, I knew, I knew that this candle or this small thing actually meant this or that. And leaving breadcrumbs like that can be really, really rewarding for people who care and are interested in your world. And you can see that with the community of One Piece. Love it or hate it, this anime is amazing at showing small details that are not relevant right now and might not be relevant one or two episodes later, but like 50 or 60 episodes later on can lead to some very powerful reveals. And if you are very attentive and perceptive, you can actually predict how the plot will go based on those very small details, if you are attentive enough. There is even a podcast that is dedicated at finding those very, very small things and creating theories about what will happen later on based on those like very small seemingly insignificant things that later on turns out that they are like a part of a big main plot of the story. Imagine having such an amazing depth in your detail inside of your world that you have an entire podcast dedicated to predict the future of your story based on the small details that you leave behind. And they actually did manage to predict some of the stuff based on those small details. So. How do you start? I will not lie, this is actually very time consuming and requires a very creative mind. But writing fiction have this very convenient quirk 
let's say, you can just look at our world. You can just look outside and try to study our world. But like with everything, you need a solid foundation. And just like I said in my previous video, a consistent world building creates a set of rules you can later use as your tools. So by making world building with immense amount of details, but in the same time not really showing those details, at least not all of them, just some of them, and not explaining everything can be a good setup for such things. Let me explain what I mean. There is a video game called Pathologic 2 and in this video game there is a localized world building with a small rural town, the semi-prosperous, which is set in like late 19th or early 20th century. The town looks semi-prosperous. There is electricity, there are factories, a train station, we see the first signs of modern metallurgy being used in the architecture. And next to all of that is a giant steppe with a nomadic tribalistic culture of people that venerates earth, nature, and holes. And we see that this pagan tribe have weird customs. We see those half-naked women posing with bowls or their skulls. We see that this nomadic tribe have very weird customs, right? You may think that the game will do the boring, evil technology fighting against culture and tradition that is in tune with nature. You know, the flower sniffers versus the evil, industrial, fat, greedy pig. Actually, no. Instead, we see that the town was heavily influenced by those people, by this nomadic tribe culture. This steppe tribe probably coexisted with the town for a very long time before the events of the game. So instead of doing the boring Pocahontas or Avatar trope where, you know, those two people just fight each other and they are on their own throats, the game shows that Sure, there is conflict that is born out of those differences, but there are also places where those two cultures merge. We see that the town folks, for example, even though going into modernity and progress, they still have some kind of respect to the old ways. There is no great overarching plot that goes really, really deep into that problem. Sure, this problem and those differences, they are a part of the main story, but this is not the main story. And the game does not say that out loud. There is no like five thousand journals spread around the town that you can read, just like in Skyrim, where everything is explained in details. No. Instead, if you are attentive enough, you see that those two cultures merge, and the proof of that is some small internal decorations and designs, and some townsfolk keeping pieces of this tribalistic culture. And the tribesmen as well are not some evil savages who just want to burn down civilization. They understand what is happening, they understand that town is living in a different way. And you will only know about this if you actually immerse yourself into the game, and you will actually look for the clues those things. The trick to all of that stuff is subtlety. If you keep throwing very obvious hints and if you keep talking about the small details on repeat, it's no longer a detail and it becomes the center stage of your plot or world building. So first what you need to do is shut down your ego. Because some people cannot stand the fact that they will spend hours working on something, then their viewers or readers or players will just not notice those details that, for example, they really worked on. I've seen that behavior multiple times happening in RPG campaigns. Times and times again, I will see a GM who will bash you over the head with every single small detail and they will just throw content at you because James spent so much time designing this small curiosity and by God you're gonna experience it. You need to first accept the fact that some people might not see what you are trying to show them, all those small details, and might not even care because most people nowadays live on autopilot and they just do everything on autopilot. They consume media on autopilot. Whatever medium of fiction you are creating, you need to remember that you are doing that for your fans, for people who actually care about your creation, not for an average normie who lives on autopilot and will not even notice or even appreciate even if they're noticed. After you manage to put down your ego, you will create an invisible layer of content. Is it a backplot inside of a story? A secretive cult or a religion that might appear later on in the story? Maybe you want to give some small breadcrumbs about your characters. Whatever that is, you need to create all of that stuff in the background. As I said previously, invisible layer. Invisible because most people may not see it and it may never be discovered. Very few games or movies or TV shows will do that because they always ask 
back to the assumption that if it will flop, then the sequel will never come out. And if the sequel will never come out, then all of that background lay, all of those details that they prepared for a future reveal will just never materialize and all of that work will go to waste. But the problem is that if it doesn't flop, then they need to actually create all of that layer, all that stuff after the fact. And because of that, surely they will forget about something. It will not be very organic and it will not be naturally implemented. And people will notice, thus shattering the immersion and suspension of disbelief. I hope that video proved most useful to you. I am planning now to make this type of content full time now. At least, well, at least full time as much as my nine to five job allows me to do. Tell me guys if you liked this type of content and you can even suggest new video idea in the comments down below. Remember to smash that subscribe button, like, comment and whatever the YouTube algorithm wants me to say. And remember that you are just one page, one chapter away from greatness.